Welcome back. I am attorney Tammy Saltzman and you are watching Divorce Connection Network. Hi, today we're here with Mark Hurwitz. Hi Mark. Hi Tammy. How are you? Doing good, thank you. Mark is one of my coolest guests. He is a private investigator. He owns Crossroads Investigations and he has been in private practice for the last six years and I have used his services personally to do some background checks and he does a great job. His background, believe it or not, is he worked in the White House and for the CIA. That's cool. Hi Mark. Hi Tammy. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. So I know in my personal experience I've used a private investigator one time. Um, my ex-husband moved in with a woman that I got a really bad vibe about and at the time my son was about nine years old and I was very concerned about who this woman was and who my ex-husband was exposing my son to and I did a background check and you were kind enough to assist me with that so thank you. My pleasure. And um, the information that I got provided me with valuable information that helped me make decisions with regard regard to what was in the best interest of my child. And so I know that there is a need for private investigation services and I know that sometimes clients, you know, feel that they need the services when they really don't. So I've invited you on the show to talk about what three tips you think any couple out there who is divorcing should think about if they think they might need a private investigator. So sure. what would be your first tip? Please tell our audience. Well, the first thing I would suggest to anyone who comes to, to me, to Crossroads, thinking about hiring an investigator is have you spoken to your attorney? And I probably am a bad business person because I talk myself out of business sometimes. Um, but people make decisions on an emotional state sometimes and it's not going to help them in court. So I want to make sure that they're making their decision based on a legal uh, foundation and not an emotional one because otherwise they may be just spending good money after bad. That's a great tip. So sometimes you don't really need a private investigator and sometimes you do need a private investigator. One of the things, if a client comes in and says, my husband's having an affair, uh, my number one question is, is he spending money on this woman? Is he have an apartment for her? Is he getting her a car? Is he taking her on lavish vacations? Is he buying her jewelry? This is what would affect the divorce more than he has some girlfriend. That's right. I mean, people think that that's what they need to uh, get a divorce in Florida. And they're looking for that evidence, when in fact they may not need that evidence. They, but they do need some of these other contingent uh, piece of information that a lawyer can advise them. Right. So what Mark is saying is that in Florida, you don't need a reason to get divorced. This is a no-fault state. If someone has an affair, it doesn't make them bad, it doesn't make them wrong, and it doesn't make the court um, favor you over the other spouse. The only favor that you would get is if you could prove that there's been monies, marital monies, expended that you would be entitled to a credit back. So not always do you need a private investigator. If your spouse is going to someone's home for home cooked meals all the time for company, that's not something that we care about. Right, but uh, there are cases where you may need an investigator, and in that case, you would need surveillance. Yes, let's talk about, that's your second tip. So when would a spouse need surveillance, and how would they best utilize you? Right, so when someone hires Crossroads for surveillance, I always advise, we need to know something about when are we going to look, because surveillance can get very expensive right. uh, very quickly if you just have someone sitting in a car for eight hours or ten hours a day. We need to know, do you suspect that your spouse may be going out with someone when they're saying they're doing something else during a specific time window? Right, so that would be quite commonly, I'm working late tonight, and or I'm entertaining clients tonight, I'm going on a business dinner, those are common things that you would hear, or I'm heading out of town for a business trip, and you might want to know, is the spouse inviting a guest to join them? Exactly. 
And that's something that we can do and document with video and photo and, and prepare the reports for that. Right. So you wouldn't want to be sitting outside the office for eight hours waiting for that spouse to then go on the dinner appointment. You would first start your surveillance at 5 o'clock when work gets out, watch where the spouse is heading, who the spouse is meeting with, take photographs, document, try to get copies of dinner receipts, that kind of thing. Is that correct? Absolutely. We don't want to take advantage of our clients. We want to set it up so so that they spend the least amount of money possible to get the most information that they can. Okay, yeah. so that's important. So you want to, when you do hire a private investigator, give, if you want surveillance, make sure that you have a specified time frame and know how much is this going to cost me per hour. Do the calculation yourself. If you're paying $250 an hour and they're going to sit there for 10 hours for one day, that's $2,500. That adds up very quickly. So that's great advice. What would be another reason why a couple considering a divorce would want to hire a private investigator? Well, the most common reason that, that we get hired in divorce cases is for asset searches. And this is really wide ranging. We start with hard assets. What properties does a spouse own? Are there mortgages? Um, what vehicles do they own? Do they own it outright or are they leasing? What bank accounts do they have? Where are the bank accounts? How much money are in the bank accounts? Uh, there's the brokerage accounts, how much money are in those brokerage accounts. Um, then there's corporate affiliations. Does your spouse have any companies that he's opened, he or she's opened, and are there properties under those entities? It can go on and on, but we need to know exactly what the financial picture is to help you with your case. What if the spouse is not forthcoming with all of the bank accounts? Are you able, using a social security number, find bank accounts in the United States and outside of the United States? Yeah, we do a nationwide bank account search. Actually, we don't charge if we don't find anything. And as far as overseas, we need wow. to know what country to look in. Um, and those prices you know, vary depending on the country. But yeah, we can do international asset searches as well. How would you determine which country to look at? Well, we would have to uh, work with the, uh, the client and their attorney to deduct the best, the best guesses and a lot of those are either no hit, no fee, or, or very low fee if we don't find anything to mitigate the risk of searching. Can you address at all, and I know this is not your area, but a lot of times spouses want to do their own investigations, and they sometimes put GPSs on their spouse's cars, or they put surveillance cameras in the home, or they put a recording device on a phone. Can you discuss the legalities and the implications of those kinds of things? Every one of those issues you just mentioned have uh, several legal implications. You need to know the law. You need to ha have someone working with you who knows the law. Otherwise, the evidence you can collect may not be usable in court. For example, in Florida, it's a two-party state for audio recording, two-party consent. Uh, if you don't have both parties' consent, that's illegal to tape record someone. Uh, putting a GPS tracker on a vehicle, you have to have the owner of the vehicle's consent to put that GPS tracker on there. That's why normally we don't do that. It's not legal. Of course, if you have minor children, that's a different story. No, so, you know, these are some of the things that, as an, a divorce attorney, I hear. People come to me with tapes and they're like, listen to this, and I'm like, we can't use that. So. I recommend that if you have a criminal attorney that you're friendly with, ask a criminal attorney what the laws are with regard to doing your own type of investigation. Another person to ask would be a police officer, right, or an FBI agent, and make sure that whatever you're doing, you're not cutting your nose to spite your face, so to speak, because someone could press charges against you. Is that sure, correct? Absolutely. And I'm always available to answer questions when, when people call. And Mark is available. So Mark's website and contact information will be available after the show on divorceconnectionnetwork.com. And we hope that you feel free to reach Mark there if you have any questions. And please feel free to find a family law attorney that will give you a free consult so that you can determine whether or not you even need need to use a private investigator. And finally, be careful. If you are doing your own investigation work, make sure what you're doing is legal. Thanks for joining us. Mark, so nice to have you here. Thank you so much, Tammy.